Creating custom function blocks is a great way to improve your efficiency when it comes to PLC programming. You develop a solution once and then you can use it over and over again. And so what I'd like to do in this video is show you how inside SysMac Studio we can create custom function blocks very easily. Now beyond just time savings, there really are three main reasons why creating custom function blocks can be a huge benefit. So let's take a look at those. First, troubleshooting. Since the source code for a function block resides only in one location, if you fix the error in the source code, then within your SysMac project, all of the instances of that function block will automatically be fixed. Second, cleaner code. Oftentimes, function blocks can have 10, 20, 50 rungs of ladder, however much is required for that part of the solution. And by condensing all of that down into a single function block, when somebody opens the program, it's easier to follow what's happening because all of that is condensed down to that single rung. And thirdly, by keeping all of the algorithms and intellectual property within a function block, people can still access the program without needing to see all of the real deep and dirty details within a project. So that allows someone to still get in and see that the inputs and outputs are functioning properly without getting into that really hairy details. So it protects your intellectual property and then it also just protects the functioning of the machine by keeping the core algorithms protected. SysMac Studio gives two ways to create function blocks. You can either create a library project file or you can create them directly in your program, which is what I'll do here. To create my function block, I'll right click on function blocks in the POU section and add ladder. I'll rename my function block scan count and double click on the function block to begin programming. First thing I'll do is set up my variables. Now internal variables are variables that are only visible within the function block. In out variables define the inputs, outputs, and special in out variables that the user can interact with. And then we generally avoid using external variables so that the user interaction is only defined by the inputs and outputs. So I'm going to write a function block that counts to a number specified by a user input and also count how many times I've run the function block. For my inputs, I'll need an execute bit to start counting scans and a count input variable that I can use to specify how many scans I want, and I'm gonna set that up as a uint. For outputs, I just need a done bit for when I'm done, and then I also need a way to increment an execution counter to count how many times I've run the function block. This execution counter is special because I need to both read from the value and write to the value. And this type of read and write access to a value is what we call an in-out variable. So I'll go ahead and define that execution count variable as an in-out and set that to a uint as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and speed up writing the code for this, but it's a simple routine that latches in an execute bit to start counting scans. On the rising edge of the execute bit, I also reset an internal variable I created for holding the current count value to increment and compare against the count input value for each scan. And then once they're equal, I trigger the done bit, which breaks the latch circuit, stops counting, and then increments the execution count variable. Now that it's done, I can go back to my program and add an instance of the function block. I'll right click on my rung and select insert function block, or simply highlight the rung and hit the shortcut F for function block. Typing the name scan count in the name adds a scan count function block to my program. And then I give it an instance name over the top of the function block. I can assign variables to my inputs for executing the function block, for setting the count value, and then for setting the count input variable as well. And if I wanted, I could also assign a variable to the done bit. So now that it's all entered, let's go ahead and run it in simulation to watch it in action. I'm going to enter a count value of 100 scans, and I'll leave the executed count input at zero since I haven't run the function block yet. I'll trigger the execute input, and you can see that it quickly runs. The output goes high, and the executed count input output has incremented by one. So let's go ahead and hit it again. And once more, you can see that each time the executed count increments by one. Now, adding a second instance of this function block is as simple as adding another rung, inserting the function block, giving it a unique instance name, and then assigning the input and output variables. 
And now I have clean code that's easy to read, troubleshooting or editing one source code, updates multiple instances, and if I wanted, I could password protect my function block to only allow designated people to edit and copy it. So now that you know how to write a custom function block inside SysMac Studio, I'd highly encourage you to use one on your next project. And to learn more about writing custom function blocks or all of the e-learning that's available from Omron, head on over to omron247.com.